Eileen Conway. On April the 6th, 1986, a farmer in Lawton, Oklahoma, discovered a body inside a flaming car on a bridge. The car belonged to a man named Pat Conway, and the body was soon identified as his wife, Eileen. Authorities believed that she died in a tragic accident, but Pat found convincing evidence that she was murdered. On the day of her death, the screen door in the back was left open. Her purse was left behind, the iron was left on, the garden hose was filling water in the pool, and in the bathroom, the tub was filled with water and the phone was left off the hook. Also, Pat found that the road where Eileen died was unfamiliar. Neither of them had ever been there before her death. He contacted investigator Ray Anderson and the next day they went to the site where the car crashed and they found a church bulletin that couldn't have gotten out of the car unless it was stopped. Anderson believed that Eileen was with someone in the car and that person opened the door, set the accelerator, slammed it into drive hoping to send the car into the creek and making it look like an accident. The cause of death was changed from accident to unexplained. Burn tests showed that the car had been doused with a substance similar to gasoline. To this day, nobody knows why Eileen died. The police believe that Eileen's death may be connected to several burglaries in the area and that when she walked in on the burglars, they abducted her and killed her. Sadly, Pat Conway died on August 20th, 2013, without ever knowing the true circumstances behind Eileen's death. Deputy George Conniff was shot in the line of duty on September 14th, 1935, while interrupting a milk robbery in progress. He was rushed to the hospital and briefly regained consciousness, but was unable to give any information on the people that shot him. Ten hours later, he sadly died from the injuries. An investigation soon began, led by George's friend, Sheriff Elmer Black. However, despite Elmer's efforts, the killer was never caught. In 1985, Tony Bamonte began investigating Conniff's murder and soon found a witness who claimed to know the identity of George's killers. The witness was a detective named Charles Sonnabend, and he allegedly went to the Seattle prosecutor in 1955 and told him he knew who the killers were. Sonnabend said that in 1935 he arrested a suspect named Casey Logan, who was suspected of several milk robberies. Logan eventually named Clyde Ralston, another detective, as being involved in the murder. In 1955, Sheriff Black, after hearing this story, insisted that the case be reopened and that he help the investigator. Just three months later, however, Black died suspiciously after falling from a bridge. The case once again became cold until 1985 when Bermonte when Bermonti began reinvestigating the case. Bermonti's research soon became public and several witnesses came forward. Pearl Keogh met with Belmonte and said that her friend Virgil Burke was involved in George's murder along with Logan and Ralston. Pearl said that Virgil had confessed to the murder to her husband in the 1940s and said that Ralston had covered up their crime Ralston was able to get past a roadblock that had been set up by officers since he was a detective. In 1989, two more witnesses came forward, Daniel Mangan and Bill Parsons, who were both officers at the time of George's murder. On the night of September 14th, 1935, they were told to dispose of a package by their superior. They threw the package, which was in the shape of a gun into a nearby river. Recently, Dan showed Bermonti where he had been standing on the bridge when he dropped the package. 
Fortunately, the river had been dammed recently, so Bramonti and several others were able to search the dry riverbed. Within minutes, they were able to find a pistol that is presumed to be the one that Dan threw into the river. Bermonti is convinced that this was the gun that was used in George's murder. Bermonti believes that Clyde Ralston, Casey Logan and Virgil Burke were the killers of George Conniff. At the time of the broadcast, Ralston was the only suspect still alive. However, the murder remains officially unsolved because there is not enough evidence to make an arrest. Author James Elroy was just 10 years old when his mother, Geneva Jean Elroy, was raped and strangled to death by an unknown man. Jean was divorced from James' father and worked as a staff nurse at a Los Angeles factory and lived in nearby El Monte. She had custody of her son during the week. Every Saturday, he would take the bus to stay with his father. On Sundays, he would return by cab. However, on Sunday, June 22nd, 1958, he returned home to find policemen in the yard. He was then told that his mother had been murdered. After her death, James's life turned for the worse. Especially after his father's death, he drank, used drugs, burglarized homes and stole cars. During the 1960s and 1970s, he spent several years in and out of prison. However, he eventually sobered up and became interested in crime novels. He soon began writing them. In 1982, his first book was published. Within the next decade, he would publish 10 more crime novels. He later wrote the book the Black Dahlia, a fictionalised account of the murder of Elizabeth Short. In 1994, James started investigating his mother's 36-year-old murder and looked through the evidence from his mother's case. He finally looked at the image of her suspected killer. He was able to locate a waitress named Levon Chambers, who served Jean and the unidentified man at around 10pm on the night her death at a drive-in. James also learned that later in the night, Jean and the unknown man were also seen with an unidentified blonde woman at a bar called the Desert Inn. She apparently knew both Jean and the suspect. She left with them at around midnight. At 2.15am, Jean and the man arrived at the same drive-in that they were at earlier without the blonde woman. They left at around 3am. Police suspect that the man then took Jean to the place where she was killed, which was a somewhat secluded area. They believe that the man wanted to have sex with Jean, but she refused. At that point, he attacked her, raped her, and then murdered her. Police believe that the man seen with Jean the night of her death is her killer. Her murder still remains unsolved. Police have nicknamed the man seen that night with Jean the swarthy man who had dark hair and an olive complexion. One of the witnesses remembered that he had no accent. His car was described as a 55 or 56 dark green Oldsmobile. He has never been identified. Police would like to question the unidentified blonde woman who was seen with them the night of Jean's death. If still alive, she would be in her late 80s or early 90s. Police would also like to speak with some of Jean's former co-workers at Airtech Dynamics who may have information about her killer.